Thank you guys for tuning in to Tag Church here in Little Rock, Arkansas. We pray that this message will truly be a blessing for you today. If you would like to partner with us financially, you can do so by visiting us at tagchurch.net. And also, if you have any prayer requests, please don't hesitate to send it to the email address on your screen because we would love to partner with you in prayer. So, I hope you're ready for a word from the Lord today. Let's get right into it, and God bless you. How many of you know church is like a charging station? Maybe y'all are more spiritual than me, but I need to come to this place on Sunday. You know, my cell phone only works if I keep it charged. And I'm the world's worst at not keeping my phone charged. I'm very bad about plugging it up at night. So the next morning, I start the day with no charge. How many of you know it's not good to start the day with no charge? And I believe that Sunday is a day that just charges you and me to start a new week. Can you say amen? So get to the charging station. Get plugged in and let God charge you today. We are teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. How many of you are thankful for the Holy Spirit today? Come on, His presence is in this place today, and He has given the church some awesome gifts. Why? Because in the natural, we fall short. Amen? So these gifts are not natural. And I just, just stay with me for a second. You know, people, when, when I talk about the word of knowledge today, if you, are, if you listen to this message in the natural realm with the natural mind, you're going to think this guy is crazy. There is no way that God could give you facts that you have no way of knowing. Let's not put any limitations on God today. Amen? Let's not put any limitations on the Lord today. Crystal, come here just a second. I've I, I, I seen somebody in, the, in, in church today that's never been to church. In, in, I mean, never been to church. I wonder who that could be. I wonder who that could be. David and Emily, you want to stand up today? Look, I mean, eyes uh, from here, it looks like eyes are open. I want you to welcome baby Samuel to the house of the Lord today. Crystal, take this microphone and just pray a blessing over that baby. We pray a blessing over baby Samuel, Lord. We thank you for this family, that you've given them a beautiful baby boy. We thank you that his days are numbered and ordered by you. We thank, that you, we thank you that you're blessing his health. You're going to bless him, God, as he grows in this family. I just pray blessing upon blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Good to have you guys back in the Lord's house today. Amen. Since his presence here, God wants to do something today. Are we going to let him do it? We're teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. Thank you, Pastor Josh. We are looking at nine gifts that are outlined in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. I told you last week that the nine gifts of the Spirit can be put into three classifications. We are looking at the first grouping or the first classification called the revelation gifts. The revelation gifts are the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, and the gift of discerning of spirits. Take your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. We're looking at the first 11 verses. I will not take time to read those again. Let's just draw our focus to verse number 8. Call your attention to verse 8 of our text that says in the New King James Version, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. This is not the gift of knowledge. This is the gift of the word of knowledge. I told you last week about the word of wisdom, that the word of wisdom is kind of like uh, if, if your life was a sentence or your situation was a sentence, and you have a blank line where you need a word to complete that sentence, 
That's how the word of wisdom operates. Sometimes we are just a little shy of what we need to do, where we need to go, what decision we need to make. So God gives us a word to complete that sentence, the word of wisdom. If you were not here last week, go to Facebook or YouTube and listen to that message. Today, we will continue in the Revelation gifts by looking at the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge, similar to the word of wisdom. Many times we just need a word. We need something that will complete the sentence. I hope you have your handout and opened up. Is everybody, anybody need a handout? Everybody's been served. Wonderful. Hopefully you have found your place. The first sentence is already up on the screen for you to fill out those blanks as I was speaking about. Now, uh, uh, let's switch mics. Okay, we're going to switch mics. I was holding the handheld and doing, just forgetting. Okay. Um, The word of wisdom that we talked about last week can be most accurately understood. And if you didn't get this definition last week, please write it down somewhere on your notes there. The word of wisdom is receiving divine direction uh, regarding or concerning any particular situation. Now the word divine means God. So receiving God direction. What, what do I need to do, God? What, what do we need to do? What is your will in this matter? The word of wisdom is receiving that divine direction concerning a particular situation. So what is the word of knowledge? It's on the screen. The word of knowledge is the divine ability. Divine again, God. The God ability to know facts that were not otherwise apparent, okay? So the gift of the word of knowledge that we read about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is a gift that the Holy Spirit will give you at a particular time. Hear me, you and I, none of us possess or own any of these nine gifts. You may flow in one more than the other. God may use you in one more than the other, but that doesn't make it your gift. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's not your gift, it's the church's gift. Amen? We talked about that on week one. God has not given these nine gifts to make any of us more spiritual. Now, there are spiritual gifts in the Bible that God has given us. Sometimes you're born with them. Sometimes you receive them by the laying on of hands. Sometimes God puts a calling on your life. That is your gift. God's given you. That's different from these spiritual gifts or these manifestations of the Spirit. They're not for us. They are for the church. So the word of wisdom that God may use us in is not for us to look spiritual or to look mighty in the eyes of other men. It is simply a fact that God has given us for ourselves, for someone else, for someone else that knows someone else. God's given us a fact that there is no way we could have known that. There's no way in the natural I could have known that about you. Even, through the, even though the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom are two distinct gifts, they often operate in tandem. In other words, they, 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 they operate hand in hand. Matter of fact, as we look today, as I teach on the word of knowledge, we are going to find that the word of knowledge also operates with other gifts of the Spirit, specifically the gift of healing. Sometimes God may give you a word of knowledge about a sickness in someone's body, and God is giving you that fact to share with them, which will increase faith in their life to be able to receive their healing. I've seen this over and over again. So what I want you to see is that the gifts operate together in tandem. When an individual is going through a particular perplexing situation, what could be better than God to reveal facts uh, or certain facts that would be impossible to know 
And then God revealed the pattern for the solution. There's nothing better than that right there. And that's how the word of knowledge works. I want to ask, um, you know, uh, driving down the street. I mean, just, just think about this with me for a moment. Have you, ever, have you ever been in a traffic jam? Of course, you live in Little Rock. You've been in a traffic jam. You know, a traffic jam is, uh, uh, you, you know, I, I know um, a while back we were going to Branson. And, uh, uh, I mean, we're on a nice little two-lane highway between here and Branson. And there was a traffic jam. Uh, I mean, it was as far as I could see, there were cars in front of us, and we were not moving. It was a complete standstill. I mean, people were getting out of their car, sitting on their hood. Nobody was moving. What I did not know, and what the car in front of me or the car behind me did not know, is what was happening up ahead of us. We didn't know how far up ahead. We didn't know if there was a wreck. Was somebody, uh, did a, what happened? We had no knowledge of it whatsoever. It wasn't until we were able to start moving and we got up to where the accident was that we found a log truck had pulled up onto the highway and, and hit and missed the road and had turned over. And so it was taking them a few hours to remove these, these logs from the, from the highway to get traffic flowing again. Now, how many of you know if I had been, if we had been in a helicopter that day and was able to just fly on past it, we would have known exactly by looking down what was going on that the cars, 12, 15, even 50 cars down the highway would have no knowledge of. That is exactly how the gift of, the, of knowledge, the gift of the word of knowledge operates. If you can picture and when you're in a car, you're on the natural plane. You can only see what's around you. You don't know what's ahead of you. You don't know what, what God may be doing up ahead of you. You, have no, you cannot see it. You're limited by your own natural abilities. But if you were in a helicopter, that puts you on a spiritual plane. It allows you to see things that you could not see on your natural plane. So if I'm in a car and I'm unable to see a problem up ahead of me, I'm unable to understand why there's a traffic jam, I'm operating in the natural. So many times God will come along through the Holy Spirit and give us a word of knowledge. In other words, he brings us from the car and he puts us up in the helicopter. He brings us from the natural plane and he puts us up in the spiritual plane and how many of you know if I was up in a helicopter and 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 I had family getting ready to travel that highway I could call them and I could say hey mom you may not want to go to Branson this way you may want to go around this way because there's a huge traffic jam and you're going to be delayed it looks like from up here a few hours how many of you know my mother would appreciate me giving her that knowledge now the only way I could do that is if I was on a different plane Church, that is how the word of knowledge operates. It's some fact. It's something that will help you in your walk. It's something that will help God bring you to your destination. How many of you know God has a destination for every person in this place? Sometimes that word of knowledge is to get you to your healing. Sometimes that word of knowledge is to help you in a decision you have to make. Sometimes that word of knowledge is about a relationship. Listen, parents, if you have teenage kids, you need to be praying for the gift of knowledge to be in operation all day long. I don't, listen, if the gift of knowledge is operating, God can tell me things about my teenage daughter that I didn't have to go to an app and find out. I didn't have to search her phone. He can tell me things. Why? God has a plan for her life. And if anything may be keeping her from that destination, God could reveal that knowledge to me to help her and to get her back on on course can you say amen today so how or, or how does it happen this can happen look at this note here this can happen and and we'll just place these we're not working here check 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 this can happen in the first person that means when you receive a word of knowledge for yourself okay um, maybe it, it can be anything 
I mean, it has nothing to do with anybody else. It's God has given you a fact, a, a word of knowledge, and it's just for you. You receive it yourself. It can happen. The word of knowledge can happen. My clicker's not working, so y'all just going to have to click for me. In the second person, Pastor Josh is around, wants to come and get this, and it may need batteries, I'm not sure. It can happen in the second person. The second person is when the word of knowledge operates, another person speaks a word of knowledge over you. A couple weeks ago, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge in the message that there was someone who was dealing with a toothache. No, that's all right. Thank you, though. Um, and, and I didn't, you know, I mean, of course you can guess that. We're going to talk about that later because I told you in every one of these gifts, we're going to talk about how the gifts can be abused Law of percentage will tell you if you're preaching to a couple hundred people, maybe several hundred by live stream, that surely one person out there has a toothache. You know, anybody can get up and just play a guessing game. That's not the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is when God drops that in your spirit that somebody listening, and that was the Sunday that we had to shut church down so no one was even in the building. Someone watching by live stream had a toothache. And then after I said it, the Lord made it even more specific. He said the toothache is on their lower left side. And I begin to give that word of knowledge that it's on your lower left. And that week, two people told me that God healed them of a toothache on their lower left side of their mouth. Somebody ought to give the Lord praise for the word of knowledge today. Now that again is in second person. That was, that was a word of knowledge for someone else. Now you know that the scripture says, matter of fact, if your Bibles are still open, go over to chapter 14 because remember, thank you, we'll give it another shot. Thank you guys. Uh, there we go. Perfect. Thank you, Pastor Josh and guys up in the sound booth. Jo uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I I've told you that chapter 12 is the gifts. Chapter 13 is how they must operate with the fruit of the Spirit. Chapter 13 is the chapter of love. We preach it, use it at weddings, but really it's not in the context of weddings. It's in the context of how the gifts of the Spirit should operate and then chapter 14 is about the regulation of the gifts, how they are to operate, how they are regulated. And in chapter 14, verse 29, it says one should prophesy and another should judge. Okay, now don't miss that verse. We're, that's a, that, the, we're talking about the regulation of the gift of prophecy or for this sake, the gift of the word of knowledge. One should give the word of knowledge. Let me just put it in that wording for this gift of the spirit. And another should judge. In other words, and, and listen, if you're ever being used in the gift of knowledge, the word of knowledge, you need to make this a part of your practice. If God gives me a word of knowledge uh, that Pastor Dennis is just um, having a horrible week, uh, he found out that you know the, the, the owner of where he has his business in is, is going to sell the business and and Pastor Dennis doesn't know where he's going to go, what he's going to do. And, 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 and let's just say that's what I'm sensing. I, I'm feeling this. I'm sensing this word of knowledge. And I come up to Pastor Dennis and I say, hey, Pastor Dennis, just feel like, feel like God is speaking to me that uh, maybe where you have your business, the, the owner is getting ready to sell that and you have nowhere to go and you've been really worried about that. But God just wanted me to tell you that he already has a place for you. He's going to take care of you. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to listen. When you give a word of knowledge, you need to get into the practice of asking people to judge that word. One should prophesy, another should judge. Uh, the way I do it is I say this, does that make sense to you? Now what if as I'm telling this, him, telling this to him, I ask him to judge it by saying, does this make sense to you? And he says to me, uh-uh. No, actually I was just talking to the owner yesterday and you know, he has no intentions of selling. He's deeding it to his daughter. He told me, I'll be here for years. I mean, uh, I don't know. You must have had some pizza, Pastor, or something like that. <laughs> you need to learn to be humble enough when you operate in the gifts of the Spirit to receive correction. You need to be humble enough to say, oh, 
I'm sorry. I must have missed that. I don't know what, what I was thinking. I'll have to go back and pray, but, I, but I'm sorry. And hear me. If you're on the end where you're receiving a word, you need to be willing to say, I don't receive that. Hello, somebody. If it's not God you, and you, you're judging that word, that prophecy, that knowledge, word of knowledge, whatever it is, and, it's, and you know it's not of God, you need to say, I do not receive that. Because, again, when, the more people you get in to these gifts, the more room you have for error and things going wrong. It, it would not, listen, if you miss it, it doesn't make you a false prophet. Now, in the Old Testament, they may have taken you and stoned you to death. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Thankfully, we live under the law of grace today. Amen? And we ought to be willing that if we miss it to say, you know what, I'm going to do better next time. Amen? Listen, if we, if we think we got to bat 100%, listen, you are not the inspired word of God. If we bat it 100% all the time, we could be adding to the Bible and writing extra books of the Bible. We don't. We're going to miss it. And, and it's okay. Uh, we learn from that. But again, the more people you see on the screen, the third person. You know, this is when God speaks a word of knowledge to someone who passes the information along to another person. I mean, then it gets... I mean, this gets real crazy at times because sometimes things, you know, maybe you didn't remember to tell them everything the Lord gave me. Maybe you, maybe you added some to it that the Lord didn't give, right? This happens where maybe, uh, maybe we're just giving examples here. I'm in an altar and I'm praying for a lady and the Lord gives me a word of knowledge about her grandson. Whatever that word is, just pretend whatever you want it to be, okay? And I tell her... Uh, do you have a grandson? Yes. Is he? Yes. Was he? Yes. I feel like the Lord's wanting me to, to share this with him. Will you, will you call him and tell him this? That would be an example of how it would operate in third person. Now, again, the takeaway from here, write it somewhere on the side of your notes, is that we, we when operating in this gift, we need to be humble enough for people to say to, to us, I don't receive that word. Now, if it is the intention of our Heavenly Father to reveal the solution to difficult situations through the word of wisdom or the word of knowledge, what importance does the word of knowledge play in such a scenario? Look at your handout, look at the, the, the screen. First, number one, the word of knowledge will birth faith in the heart of the person who is going through a difficulty. It will birth faith in that person who's going through a difficulty. Now, I don't, you know, uh, pe people will often say, they'll say, you know, uh, uh, Pastor, you, you, you'll say the Lord spoke to you, the Lord spoke to you, the Lord spoke to you. You know, how many of you know he's a speaking God? And if we will listen, he will speak to us. Many times he'll speak to us through this gift of knowledge. Our church was going through a difficult situation as we were learning that the state of Arkansas was going to, by eminent domain, take our, uh, some of our property. And as you can tell by the front of the church, that is well into process, right? And behind the church, there is no forest behind us anymore. There's about to be a nice street that's going to go through there. Uh, we are being surrounded on nearly every side. Uh, how many of you know that was, that was discouraging for us when we were learning these things? And, you know, I seen a sign down Cantrell here the other day that said the road work will be completed, I think it said summer of 2023 or 24 or 20, something like that. And I'm like, oh, how exciting, you know, it's the year 2020. That's three years from now we get to deal with this. So, uh, you know, it's not exciting. But what is happening out in front of us, Cantrell is expanding. It's going to a six lane highway. It's going to be a flyover right out here in front of us. It's going to be above our gutters. This is what's happening right here on the road. The Lord in the middle of all that mess when I had church members coming up to me, are we going to sell the property? What are we going to do? Are we going to stay? Everybody was in turmoil on what was going to happen. The Lord gave me a word of knowledge about Cantrell expanding. And here's what he said. 
And, and, and it was a word that uh, uh, hopefully if you're praying the prayer points for 2020, you'll be able to quote this with me. The word of knowledge was, as Cantrell expands, so will tag. Come on, somebody. Now, I don't know what's going to happen at TAG. I didn't know COVID was going to hit 2020 this year. I, I, God didn't give me a word of knowledge about that. But what he did tell me is that when that highway goes from four lanes to six lanes, and when it goes from being down on the ground to up in the air, at the same time it's expanding, TAG Church is going to expand in spiritual and numerical growth. I believe it with everything inside of me. So guess what? I quit worrying. I could care less about what's happening out there. Y'all are still disturbed that it looks bad. I don't care it looks bad. You're disturbed that the water got shut off a few weeks ago. The water got shut off. Whoopie doo. We're disturbed that the irrigation, they've cut the irrigation line, so all of our plants are probably going to die. Some of the things we're having to water with water hose. Everybody's in an uproar about that. I don't care. You know why? Because when this thing is all said and done, we're going to have the most beautiful landscaping on this church property. We're going to have the most beautiful parking lot. We're going to build a new building. We're going to give a facelift to this building, and this place is going to be full of people and the power of God because as the as the as Cantrell expands, so does tag. I'm telling you, it will birth a word of knowledge will birth faith in your heart. How many of you'd love for me to stand up and say, the Lord spoke to me and said, as Cantrell expands, tag's going to die. We will be no more. Amen. How I many you feel like it can be that way sometimes? But a word of knowledge like that's not going to birth no faith in you. It's going to birth what? Fear. I'm trying to teach you something without having to say it, so let me just go ahead and say it. And that is if someone gives you a word of knowledge and it creates fear rather than faith, that's when you say, I don't receive that. Do you know how many people we've had come up to us in our and said, you know, the Lord just showed me in a dream last night that, that, that you have cancer. Uh, before we had kids, told Crystal, you won't have kids. Your womb is barren. <laughs> I mean, we've been, we've been given crazy words guess what I don't receive that and then we go home and we laugh about you and talk about you <laughs> we literally sit down like God why did you give us the church of nuts and flakes to pastor <laughs> feel like we should call ourselves the first cereal assembly of God <laughs> sometimes we got so many nuts and flakes running around but I'm telling you if it doesn't create faith in you if it creates fear, it's not from God. Because where does fear come from? The devil. So many people are afraid of COVID right now. Why are you afraid of COVID? Come on, church. Why are you? Jesus laid hands on the leper. And we're afraid of a virus that won't even affect but 0.04% of the population. Did I get that number right? I've been reading your stuff, Candace. So I'm learning your C CDC. I better move on. I'll make everybody mad that wants to stay in fear. So the second thing, talking about how does the word of knowledge operate in such a scenario, confirmation that God is walking through the difficulty with them. How many of you know God never leaves you? We all know that. He'll never leave you, never forsake you. But when we receive a word of knowledge, it's almost like a special confirmation of God just saying, I am here. I do know. I am with you. We know he never left us, but sometimes we just need that word of knowledge that will help us. And it will help us know that God is walking through that situation with us. You know, I, I, I'm just thinking of this. I remember the first time the word of knowledge operated in my life. Now hear me. I had never listened to a teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. I had probably read the nine gifts reading through the Bible, but I was about 16 years old. I had never read a book on the gifts of the Spirit, never went to a seminar on the gifts of the Spirit. You know how much I knew about the word of knowledge? That it was called the word of knowledge. That's about all I knew. And that's why we're teaching this series and not just preaching it, because I want you to, to understand how these gifts operate, and then I want you to begin to make yourself available for the Holy Spirit to flow through you 
in these gifts. But I was about 16. I was in Viola, Arkansas, preaching a youth rally or something. And back in those days, youth rallies, everybody came to youth rallies. Y- y'all remember those? So there would be buses, church vans out in the parking lot. Parents came. So youth rallies on a Monday night could be a packed house. And it was this way. And I preached that night in Viola, Arkansas. And I was, I was, I was laying hands on people. I'm 16 years old. I'm laying hands on people in the altar, praying over people. And I get to this lady. And I look at her and... I instantly knew a fact that I had no way of knowing. And the fact was that she had had, uh, been in an accident and had surgery on her shoulder and that she could not lift up her arm. She couldn't do this. She couldn't even hardly lift her arm up. And that she was in severe pain. That she would, the, the word of knowledge even went as far to say you would lay in bed at night and just cry and beg God, please take the pain away. And I'm telling this lady all of this about her accident, what kind of accident. I'm telling her stuff. And again, I didn't even know it was the word of knowledge. I'm just flowing. Come on, somebody. How many of you know flowing's a good thing? And I go through this long spill of all this, and I said, God's going to heal you tonight. He's going to take the pain away. You're going to lift your arm. You'll never be the same again. And she threw her left, because it was specific, your left shoulder. She threw her left hand up in the air, and she said, I've never been in an accident, and there's nothing wrong with my shoulder. Well, how many of you know that makes you feel really good? I mean, you're you're ready to grab your Bible and and hit the road, right? I mean, we're out of here. And she just threw it up, waving, "Let, let me see. There is nothing wrong with me. I'm lost as a goose. I mean, I'm looking at her because I know what I've heard. I didn't even want to believe her. That's how convinced I was. I was like, are you sure you haven't been in an accident and God just healed you? Think real hard about it. No, I didn't ask that. I'm, I'm lost. I'm literally looking at her dumbfounded. The lady standing right next to her on the left or on her right, my left was weeping and she finally could get the words out and she said it's me not her (laughs) she said I was in an accident I'm in pain everything you just said and she tried to lift her arm she said I can't get it up any higher than that the surgery went horribly wrong and I'm having to I'm gonna have to have more surgeries and I said, is it hurting now? She said, yes. I said, I don't know why I thought it was this lady. I guess I was just in the area and I was getting warm, right? I was getting warm. <laughs> and 16 years old, I watched God heal that lady and that arm before we left that service was up in the air and she was giving God praise. She was giving God glory. She was giving God honor. You know, she was walking through a very difficult time, living with pain daily crying herself to sleep and tears coming down her face she says to me it's me it's me it was almost like she knew God had never left her but in that moment she knew God was right there with her friend that's the power of the word of knowledge amen look at look at this one here it will increase the faith level to where the individual can receive the word of wisdom or the word of knowledge. The fear level's high today. We need this gift operating to get the faith level. Next one, it increases the faith level to a point where the individual is willing to follow the instructions of the word of wisdom or knowledge. It increases the faith of the individual whom the gift is operating through. How many of you know it blesses you to bless somebody? I'm still, all these years later, amazed at what God did down in that altar the first time I ever watched God use me in the gift of knowledge. It increased my faith level. I thought God was calling me to a shoulder healing ministry because no one taught me I didn't own the gift. It was for her, and it was for that moment. Amen? It's good teaching. But our faith increases when God uses us, right? Right? Aren't you amazed when God uses you? 
especially in a gift like this, that you, it, it is, I mean, these gifts are beyond our ability. The word of knowledge operates through divine revelation. What that means is this. It's not what we suspect. I'm going to put out a lot of fires here with this gift. It's not what we've observed. It's not what we've conjured up through analyzing another human being. It's not the gift of suspicion. It's simply what we've been talking about all morning, facts revealed by the Spirit. Now, I'm not a very, sorry, sorry, but I am not a very analytical person. If you get something over on me, yay, join the line of thousands of others who get something over on me. Now, Crystal's a different story. If you get something over on Crystal, I'm like, oh, gotcha, analytical. See, the word of knowledge is not looking at a situation and thinking, okay, this is what's going on with them. And then coming over and saying, you know, the Lord showed me. It's not the gift of suspicion. It's, it's, not, it's not what we observe. You know, if you walk in on a walker and, and, and your back is hunched over and you're just barely moving up the aisle and I come up to you and say, Sister, the Lord has given me a word of knowledge that you might be in some pain in your lower back and that you've been moving slowlier than normal, you know. No, 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 no. I mean, uh, just because I've seen you. But how many of you know that's the abuse that will happen in this gift all the time? So the word of knowledge can and should be a powerful tool in the hands of the modern day church. It can be a tool that the Holy Spirit will get people's attention. It will be a tool, a gift. The Holy Spirit can say, I am real. Jesus is alive. I remember praying for a lady who had responded for a, to a healing service once. And I forget exactly what her sickness was, but she, she, she was sick. She needed a miracle. She's telling me this. I'm getting ready to lay hands on her to pray for and move on down the line and the Holy Spirit begins to tell me about unforgiveness she has with her father and her mother how she's not talked to them in however many years it was and the Lord said her physical sickness is attached to her unforgiveness oh yay that's going to be fun to share today lady just wants a healing what God was saying is I can't heal her till she forgives I had no knowledge of her relationship with her parents and that she hadn't talked to him in 17 years. And, and, and this is why, and this is the reason, but God did, because God knows everything. Amen. So I began to share this with her. And thankfully, she received the word. We talked about that earlier. It will, uh, in one of the points, how it will increase the faith level for you to follow the instructions of the word. So now she says, I, I need to forgive. Amen. The 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Look at it again. Verse 1. This is a verse we keep going back to. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. That's the word I have for all of Haven's future boyfriends. <laughs> How many of you have read the New Testament? Paul wrote two-thirds of it, and he says this a lot. I do not want you to be ignorant. Brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant about this, or I don't want you to be ignorant about that. Look at your notes. Ignorance in any arena can be extremely frustrating for both the participant and the bystander. Very frustrating. It can also be very damaging. Someone said, what you don't know won't hurt you. I, I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren. Now think about that statement. What you don't know won't hurt you. Who are we kidding? What you don't know can kill you. Come on, somebody. What you, listen, if you'd rather be ignorant than have the knowledge, something is wrong with that picture. When, when you're crossing a railroad track, if you don't know a, a train is coming... That can be deadly. 
It, hear me, it, 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 if a cancer cell gets loose in your body and you're not aware of it, it could kill you. What you don't know could kill you. Now, I want to use a, an example here, a modern day occurrence to demonstrate a very spiritual lesson. I want to use the example of driving. How many of you drove to church here today? Most of you. How many of you rode with somebody who drove to church today? I'm sure we all did, right? You know, driving's one of those things that most of us, we take it for granted, and we do it so often that we rarely give it even second thought. We just jump in the car and, and take off. You know how you can know that driving is taken for granted? Drive down the interstate, rush hour, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday morning. There are women putting their makeup on, going 70 miles an hour down the interstate. I've seen it, I don't know how many times. I mean, they're literally looking up in the mirror, putting lipstick on, you know. I, I can't believe they haven't plugged in hair curlers and started you know, sitting there. Maybe they have, I don't know. You want to know how people take, you want to know why people take uh, driving for granted? Uh, when they're going down the street, texting right? I'm not going to ask show of hands how many of you text when you're driving. I'm not going to do it. But I would venture the majority of the people in here probably text some when they drive. You know when you do that, you're taking driving for granted. Really are. It's, it's, driving is almost just like second nature to us. Now look at this on your handouts. Driving is a privilege, not an entitlement. What I mean by that is your driver's license, stay with me, can be removed. Your kids can take your driver's license away. They can say, Dad, Mom, no more. Give me the keys. And how many of you know we'll all get to that point sometime where if the state doesn't, if we live long enough, if the state doesn't take it away, the kids might. I got news for my kids. No. <laughs> now, driving is a privilege. It's not an entitlement. The right to drive can be taken away. There are safe drivers, and there are drivers who are a menace to everyone else on the road. I don't know how they all ended up in Little Rock, Arkansas, but they did. <laughs> We went on vacation a few weeks ago, went through, I think, seven states. I knew when we were back to Little Rock. Not by the view, but by the people driving on the road around me. I'm like, we are home. Amen. They all live here. They all drive here. It's the weirdest thing. If I ever backslide, I'm sure I'll have a steering wheel in my hand. Uh, follow me. A person who attempts to drive an automobile without the necessary knowledge or skills can be a very real danger to all the other drivers and the passengers out there on the road. What I mean is this, a friendly, unskilled driver is just as dangerous as a mean or an angry, unskilled driver. If you're unskilled, you're unskilled, and you're dangerous. So before you are issued a driver's license, you must demonstrate a certain level of knowledge and skill. If you're a driver, you've passed a written test. You've passed a driver's test, right? If you have a license, you, you pass those tests. When Crystal and I got married and we moved to Missouri... At that time, I don't know if it's still this way, we went to the revenue office. We needed a Missouri license. And they said, uh, they said, well, all you have to do is turn in your Arkansas license and look through this little thing, take an eye test and a sign test. That's it. No written test, no driving test. Just look through this thing, eye test, and then tell us what these signs are. Stop sign, yield. So I went through, did my signs. Crystal got up, she went through, started hers, and she said, shopping zone on one of the signs. 
I remember that lady sitting there. <laughs> that lady, she's sitting down. She's not even looking up. She's just doing her thing. She hears this all day. And Crystal said, shopping zone. And she goes, try again. <laughs> and Crystal presses a little harder in that. And she says, shopping zone? <laughs> I mean, the, lady, the lady's got a shopping bag. And she's at the mall or something. I think it was a school zone. The lady said, I'm going to let you off on this one, but we have no sign in the state of Missouri. That's a shopping zone sign. I thought, oh, Jesus, help us. If, if, you're, if you're going to drive a semi, there's certain tests you've got you to gotta take. You've got you to... Gotta, you got to show that you can you, you can drive this safely on the road. A motorcycle, you got to get a little motorcycle license. You know, a church bus and a passenger endorsement. Pa- pa- passing a driving test in which you must demonstrate the skills necessary to safely operate that vehicle, that 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 car, and and it's a written test. It's a it's a driver's test. I remember when I went to get my driver's test. I, I, you know, that, that's an exciting day. And I remember the lady that was before me failed because she had forgot which side the gas pedal was on. They had went out to leave, and the first thing she said is, now remind me again, is the gas on the right or the left? And the officer said, failed, get out. They didn't even pull out of the parking lot. He said, I ain't about to, you know. How many of you know that's a smart officer? Amen. Amen. She didn't need a license because she wouldn't be safe. Are y'all still with me? I'm getting to a point here. If you can't demonstrate knowledge that exceeds the minimum standard that's been set by the state, then you cannot legally operate that automobile. And any unauthorized operation of such a vehicle is subject to the penalties of the law of that land. You're subject to be arrested. You're subject to be put in jail. You're subject to pay the fine. I'm going somewhere. The requirements of operation for a motor vehicle are designed to protect the operator as well as every other person who may be in your car or in the cars that are on the same street or roadways that you're driving on. So when you get this license, if you choose to go out of the boundaries set by that state, if you choose to go out of the boundaries of that law, if the speed limit's 50 and you choose to go 70, if, 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 if the law is to yield at this intersection and you choose not to yield at that intersection, you are in danger of the penalty of the law. Now, pastor, what are you trying to say? Paul is saying to the Corinthian church, the believers at the church at Corinth, that God desires to give his church and give his children a special set of gifts, spiritual gifts, that will enhance your trip to heaven, that will help you get to your destination, that will, that will enhance your trip. But he's also saying if you receive any of these gifts, then you should commit yourself, hear me, to acquiring the skill and the knowledge necessary For the proper operation of that gift. We don't need people operating in the gift of knowledge that's just going to shoot from the hips. Shoot from the hip. Because unauthorized or irresponsible use of the gifts will be penalized. Again, chapter 14. The polar opposite of knowledge is ignorance. I wish you'd be not ignorant. We're told to be knowledgeable of how this gift operates. We're told don't be ignorant. Gain knowledge on how the gift of knowledge operates and all the other gifts. When you're operating in the gift of knowledge and you're calling out facts and you're, you're calling out details about a person's life that you, you have no way of knowing, you, you, you can't just operate in this gift by just guessing or by playing around. I'm trying to warn us today, there's danger if you get out of the boundaries of this gift. 
God wants to get that person to a destination and just guessing is not good. I told you last week about the Lord giving me a word of knowledge about a, a lady changing her major in college. The, you better have a word from God before you start just guessing around. Amen. You know, if we're having an altar call and, and you've been battling a smoking addiction and you come forward and you say, uh, Pastor, uh, you know, I, I've been, I, I really want set free from this and, and we pray for you and you feel like you got victory and I see you next Sunday and you come up and you say, Pastor, I, I, seven days not smoking, two weeks, 14 days, Pastor, God has set me free, not been smoking and you're excited for 21 days, 28 days and then all of a sudden you quit talking about it and we're just thankful you've got the victory and one day we're having another altar call maybe several months later and you're down at the altar you're kneeling you're praying and I just come by to pray for you and when I get down there I smell cigarette smoke on you and I pray Lord I just I just thank you that you give us the victory over our habits uh, you, you help us with our struggles and I just pray you help sister so-and-so here with her struggle set her free from this from this smoking I know she wants victory over it I know she doesn't want it in her life and I'm just praying God you help her in Jesus name amen then she gets up and comes up to me before she goes home and she says pastor I knew it I knew it I knew I couldn't hide it from you. I knew God would tell you I'm still struggling with smoking, Pastor. I know a few months ago we shouted victory, but you know I went back to it, Pastor, and I just knew God was going to reveal that to you, and he did this morning. And Just thank you for praying. You know, I could say, yes, he did, sister. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. He, he showed me at 3 a.m. this morning you were struggling with that, sister, and just wanted you to know I'm praying for you. No, 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 no. There was no word of knowledge there. I smelt cigarette smoke on you. That's how I knew you were struggling. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Listen to me. God does not want his children to operate out of ignorance. And if we operate out of ignorance, we have, by an act of our own will, chosen to do so. And the final outcome is often the same whether the person is ignorant, overzealous, seen that, even vicious. I wish I had more time. Pastor Josh, would you come? As Pastor Josh is coming and, I, and as I wrap this to a close, let me give you just a couple things here. We're, we're going to be held responsible for the damage that we inflict on others and ourselves. Listen, an improper use of the gift is, it can be more damaging than helpful. Matter of fact, I'd rather have no gifts than an improper operation of the gifts. So when the church is ignorant of the scriptures, uninformed or misinformed on vital doctrines, much harm is done to the cause of Christ. Second Peter 3.16, I won't take time to read it, but... I will say this about what you're writing down right now. If you're going to be used in any of the gifts of the Spirit, specifically the gift of knowledge, you need to be a student of the Word of God because the gifts will never go out of the boundaries of God's Word. Never. It will never contradict the Word of God. Several illustrations, you can study these this week, have yourself a devotion. Turn to these scriptures I'm going to give you. The Word of God gives several examples of the Word of knowledge and operation. And let me say it this way, incorrect operation. The first one, 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 9 through 12. Go home and study that this week. In that story, just say real quickly, God revealed the military plans and the secret maneuvers of the Syrians to the prophet Elisha. If you remember in that story, the Syrian king was so mad because he thought somebody had leaked his battle plan. No, it was God leaking the enemy's battle plans. It's a powerful passage. Here's another one, John chapter 1, verses 47 through 51. Jesus 
exercised the gift of knowledge when he engaged in a conversation with Nathaniel. If you remember, he knew he was sitting under the fig tree. Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Take a day, read all of these passages. God revealed in this passage to the Apostle Peter the scheming of Ananias and Sapphira. How many of you remember that story? They dropped dead, right? God revealed their giving pattern that day. That was a New Testament story. What if God revealed your giving pattern today? I'm quiet in here. Well, he's done it before. What if God just spoke to me and said, have Ed go print off the giving records and publicly read each one. Oh, God wouldn't do that. He's done it before in the New Testament. Told Peter, he said, no, no, this is what they gave. And they dropped dead for lying to the Holy Ghost. Whew. Maybe we should do that. I bet giving would increase. I bet it increased in that early church. I bet they took a great offering after those two folks dropped dead. Acts chapter 9, verses 10 through 18. Write that passage down. God revealed to Ananias, not, not the same person, he's, he's dead. Not the same one in Acts chapter 5. But God, God gave a word of knowledge, revealed to Ananias the whereabouts of Saul of Tarsus. And if you remember, he also revealed what Saul was doing and what God had in mind for this new convert that we now know as Paul. Here's another one, Acts 27. You remember Paul was out on the ship in the storm. God revealed to Paul that the storm on the sea would not result in the loss of his life as long as everyone stayed on the ship. So actually, that's two gifts working right there, the gift of knowledge and wisdom. Because the gift of knowledge that God gave to Paul was that the storm's not going to kill anybody. That's a good, that'll bring faith. And the word of wisdom was, but you all need to stay on the ship. Don't jump off. That was wisdom. This is what we're supposed to do. Amen. So how are we to allow this gift to operate through us? Today, is, as, as, as we draw this teaching to a close, it's important here that you understand my heart right now. Please. For the last, counting today, three Sundays, and for at least the next seven, at least, I'm teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. Well, seven weeks, when is that? End of September? ish probably the first of October we're still in this series teaching you need to hear my heart the purpose is not for just to gain knowledge but for us to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit that he can work through us there's something about the sensitivity to the Holy Ghost. I want the praise team to come, musicians, singers, come. There's something about being in tune. and be, you, you can't read a book and learn how to be sensitive. You, you don't go to Bible college and take a class and learn how to be sensitive. You learn to be sensitive by praying every day, Holy Spirit, help me be sensitive to you. Amen. We need to learn to be sensitive so that the gifts can, can flow and work through the church. So how are we to do that? First, we must develop a listening ear. Church, there is no substitute to the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit. None. The seven churches in Revelation, no doubt, had difficulties. They had good things about them, bad things about them. But to every one of them, he said, He who hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Holy Spirit's talking. We need to be sensitive. We need to be hearing him. Number two, we must be aware of how God speaks. 
Be aware of how God speaks. Write down somewhere on your notes, God speaks through his word. If you're not in the word, I don't want a word of knowledge from you. Amen. Because God's going to speak. Most of the time, he's going to speak to us through his word. I'm going to say that again. Most of the time, he speaks to us through. That's why you need to be at church on Sunday. Because God's going to speak to you through his word. Amen. That's why it's important to be in God's house. That's why it's important every day to open your Bible and read it whenever that time may be for you. And let me say this, and I, maybe I'm helping a new believer here. Read it slowly. Maybe I'm just a little slow and I need to read it slow. Read it slowly. Take your time. But he speaks. Be aware of how God speaks. He speaks through his word. He speaks through people. God will speak through people. He speaks through impressions. I'm impressed. I feel this. God's speaking. And then pray to be sensitive enough to hear his voice. Obey what he's given us. And as with any other gift or ability, we'll become more comfortable and confident with experience. So practical application. Not just knowledge, of application for us. We need to develop a listening ear. We need to be aware of how God speaks. And then we need to pray. Every day, make it part of your prayer. God, help me to be sensitive to hear your voice. And then when he speaks, obey what he's given you. And the more you do that, the more comfortable you'll become. I don't know every word of knowledge, every gift of tongues, every gift of prophecy that I've ever been used in. I, I could probably sit here till five o'clock tonight and tell you stories. I might have to sit and, and I have a horrible memory the post-it note industry's in business because of me, because I'm constantly making myself notes. When I say I have a horrible memory, it doesn't mean I forget. I very, very seldom forget what to do because I make great notes. Amen. Or I have people like my wife who reminds me, this is what you're supposed to do. It's embarrassing when you have an appointment and someone texts you and says, Pastor, I'm here. Are you in the building? And you're home. So calendars help you remember. Post-it notes. Write little things down. I may not remember every time, but I can tell you this. I remember the first time I was ever used in any gift. I told you about the word of knowledge. I'll never forget that one. It's happened many many times since I don't I'd have to think real hard to remember every one of them but I'll never forget that first time I'll never forget the first time I gave a message in tongues Sunday night service in Mountain Home First Assembly of God I was a teenager and all of a sudden listen I, I, I was like 16 15 16 years old I didn't give messages in tongues there was two people in the church that did that. How many of you know what I'm talking about? And it shouldn't be that way either. If our church only has one or two giving those messages, it's because we're not doing our part. We're just letting Brother Paul do all of them. Well, what happens when Brother Paul's gone? So we need to be sensitive. When we come into service, Lord, if you want to use me today, here I am. And all of a sudden, that message in tongues came upon me, and I thought, oh, no. You know what my first fear was? What if no one interprets it? 
What if I step out here and start speaking this out loud and no one interprets it? I remember even as I was given the message in tongues, as I was given it, in my mind I'm praying, God, please let somebody interpret it. Because I'll get in trouble. I'll be out of order. Keep quiet. I'll never forget Jim Fair. He was sitting up in the balcony and he's instantly when I finished, he started giving the interpretation. I don't even know what he said. All I could think is, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you. But how many of you know the second time was a little easier? Third time. And now, listen, now I don't even want to give them because I want you to. They're gifts for the body. But I'm going to tell you, 99 out of 100 times when a gift of tongues goes out, I know what the interpretation is. 99 out of 100 times. I may not know who's going to step out and do it, but the Lord will give me the word. Not the full word. He'll give me the, this, what it is. Sometimes I'll just have a sense in my spirit. He's calling us to step into the river, go deeper. He's got an encouraging word right here. But I, I hold back. I want somebody else to do it. What are you, what are you saying, Pastor? The more you operate, the more you're sensitive, the more you obey, the more comfortable it becomes. What I'm challenging you to today is just step out. Just step out. Let God use you. Some of you are going to be sitting at lunch today and get an impression about your waiter. Speak it. If you have an impression, you never know what may be going in their life. Speak it. Share it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, you can do so by clicking right here. And also, here's another message that might be of a great blessing to you. You can click right here. Thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. God bless you.